Are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Can you all stand up for me? Go on, stand up, stand up. Um, so, could anybody with a D license sit down? Could anybody, anybody with a C license sit down? Anybody with a B license sit down? Anybody with an A license sit down? Anybody not got a license? Ah, fantastic. Doing, you study at your students right now? Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, you can sit down. Okay. <laughs> um, everybody stand back up again for me. You will find you some seats. Hey, guys. Um, could anyone who's never done anything bigger than a four-way sit down for me? Yeah, students, good. Um, anyone who's never, <laughs> Trev, well done. Um, anyone who's never done anything bigger than an eight-way sit down? How about, so stay standing if you've done a formation bigger than 12. Stay standing if you've done a formation bigger than 20. Stay standing if you've done a formation bigger than 40. 100? 200? 300? Oh, what was it? Stay standing if you've done anything bigger than a 258 way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, of course, it's, it's, it's a little bit fun, it wakes everybody up, but it's also, it helps me understand who's in the room. Uh, I have too many props for the microphone. Oh, shit, late already. Oh, story of my life. Okay. Uh, Hey guys, hello, my name is Brian Cumming. I am delighted to be here at uh, British Skydiving Skydive the Expo to talk to you about um, big way progression. Now it's not your standard big way talk, it's not about how to do big way, it's about how to get on big ways. Um, it's how to get onto those super large formations, the 259s and above, it's the national records, the world records, how to open the door and to get yourself that dream invite, how to get noticed, accepted and invited. Okay. We're going to run through the basics. And then we're going to talk about how the basics relate to big way, what we need to adapt. We're going to talk about different events. I'm going to get inside my brain. Scary place to be. I'm going to think like an organizer. And then my favorite bit, um, how to stay on big ways. And it is, um, you can do everything in what points one to four and still get it completely wrong. It's a really obvious mistake. It's super frustrating, and no one talks about it. So point five, have a listen. And then at the end, Q&A. Um, after which, there'll be an opportunity for applause and autographs, if you like. Um, I've been dreaming about a Brit 200 way for many, many years, well over a decade now. The Brit 100 way was in 1999. Um, that was 22 and a half years ago. Uh, I think it's time to go bigger. Um, I've got a plan. I think I know how I can make it work. See how we get on. But I also said that in March 2020. Um, so I've got the same plan, just two years later. See how it goes. I'm going to use a few examples of big way stuff during the speech. And when I do, it will be relating to my plans for Brit 200. Um, good skydivers are four things. Uh, I'm going to talk about the specifics of what makes a load organizer per later on. But I just want to run through a cover off some of the basics, okay. You need to be, oh, so shout out to Tom Shorten for the photo. Um, you need to be physically fit, to a point. No one needs to go crazy here. Um, functional fitness is brilliant, so if you can do the skydives, do the pack jobs, do the tunnel, brilliant, you'll get fit in all the right ways. Um, but if you want to get fit outside the sport, then a 5K is the absolute tops, 5K run is absolute tops of what you need to do, okay. Um, you don't need to go overboard. Some sort of flexibility will help. Uh, most people seem to know what they need to do here. Just find a YouTube video, 20 minutes CrossFit. Oh, sorry, it's cross training like a Joe XP or something. Do that three times a week. It's all good. Secondly, you need to be physically coordinated. You need to know where your limbs are um, and the ability to self-correct. 
Can you guys see the mannequin? This is how I used to track for my first 400 skydives. I'm six foot one, I'm quite light, I could get away with it, but my legs were bent, my arms were down because I was feeling the wind. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, it wasn't until I asked a coach to come and jump with me and film me and we worked it out that my legs weren't straight and my arms were down. And then on the next jump, I strained my legs, put my arms alongside and we went a lot flatter, a lot faster, and we landed quite a long way off actually. Um, <clears throat> but you just don't know where your limbs are, perhaps. Um, people who learnt dance or gymnastics at school tend to be better coordinated than people who learnt football and rugby. Um, it's been trained into them. Functional fitness is great. Do loads of jumps, do loads of tunnel. You will get better at it. But if you're looking to train outside of skydiving to keep the budget down, then anything that's got a, an element of coordination in it, such as Tai Chi or dancing or Pilates or yoga or trampolining or high board diving or martial arts, anything like that is good for the budget. Okay, And you can find loads of stuff on YouTube or at home to do at home. The mental side of thing for me is one of the most important, if not more important than the physical. You need knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Skydive the Mag has loads and loads of articles, okay? Um, <clears throat> back in 2009, I went to my first big way camp. It's in California. And I went through every single magazine that I had at the time. And I borrowed some of my friends and I found every big way article. And I photocopied each article and I stapled them together and I took them on the plane with me so I could read them to make sure that I was as current as I could be when I got there. Now, obviously, all the magazines are online and they're searchable by keywords. And it's a little bit easier than that, <coughs> but that's you know that's a great resource. Other resources, um, there's other internet articles, other sources. Um, you could go on skills camps. You can listen to podcasts. You can do an online class. You can ask at the drop zone bar. You know, you've got enough experience now to know what's good and what's not from the people who you should be talking to in the drop zone bar, and you shouldn't be. Um, you could ask other skydivers, especially other organisers, or ask the people who are on the jumps with those organisers. Um, ask them to be your mentor for a weekend, perhaps. Hey, uh, you know, if you're jumping with alongside them, hey, can you look out for me? Can you give me a few tips? Um, ask them to be your mentor for the weekend or maybe for longer, you know. Um, I always have problems with doing something like that, though. It's a bit weird. Don't be shy. You jump out of planes for fun. Just say hello and ask for their advice, okay? Um, and what knowledge do you need? All of it. You need the preparation. What equipment are you going to use? You need to know about how to act in the plane. You need to know about exits. You need to know about getting to the formations. You need to know about staying in the formations, what to do in the formations. You need to know about getting away from the formations. You need to know about canopy flight. You need to know about how to act on the ground afterwards. You need to know um, all the things you shouldn't be doing as well. Um, for me, these three things is what I call skill. Um, so this gives you the skill, you're fit, you're coordinated, and you know what you need to do. And then the fourth thing, you need the right attitude, and that determines how you use that skill. It's your mindset. How do you get this? I don't really know, to be honest. What gives you confidence? How do you, um, when are you confident? You know, Is it through having knowledge? Is it through practice? Is it through visualizing? Is it through standing in front of the mirror and telling yourself that you're a tiger? You know. Um, whatever works for you. Uh, having the attitude is believing in yourself. It's the desire to do better, to learn more, um, to take responsibility. The ability to make a mistake in free fall and to forget about it. You're not, don't beat yourself up for the next 30 seconds. Just do the best you can. Okay. It's the desire to be a hero and not to be a victim of circumstance. Good. Big way skydivers are six things. So it's all the same four. Now, big way is a team. So you need to be a team player. Summarized, don't be a dick. Um, but don't be neutral either. Be actively supportive of your teammates. Um, the team is only as good as the weakest person. And if someone is dehydrated because it's a hot day and they landed far away and there's a long walk back and they're rushing to pack to get to the dirt dive, spot that get them a bottle of water or something else, help them out. What random acts of kindness can you do during the day? How many acts of kindness could you do during the day? You know, is it small stuff like pull-ups, bungees, uh, closing loops, or is it bigger stuff? And then you need experience. Uh, experience needs to be relevant. 
Uh, jumps are important, but not any old jumps. Experience gives you anticipation and solutions, plan B, plan C, etc. Uh, jump, tunnel, just do it. Have a goal in mind. Uh, you can always learn something consciously or subconsciously. Tunnel. How much tunnel should you be doing? I listened to an interview with Rhythm XP. They won the USPA Nationals in 2019 with a 26 average outdoors. They do one hour of tunnel for every 30 jumps they do. What's your ratio? How many jumps do you have? How much tunnel time do you have? Do you log your tunnel time? Do you track it? This is my tunnel logbook, by the way. Um, what experiences do you need? You know, so, sorry, on the tunnel time. If you say you're doing 120 jumps a year, could you fit in four hours of tunnel a year, hour every three months? Yeah, you probably could, actually. It's not a bad ratio. So what experiences do you need? You need experiences of making mistakes, of fixing them, of knowing when to dock and when to let the formation breathe for a couple of seconds. You need enough experience so your awareness is up and you're not fixated on one particular part of the formation. Okay. Are there any jump, jumps where you learn nothing? Well, maybe, uh, but only if you aren't paying attention. Uh, even the jumps where you learn nothing, you're getting more current, more experience under your canopy. Okay? And if you are more conscious of the experience, you could be learning a bunch. Conscious practice. Okay? If you're in the tunnel to signal the end of your flight, Bedford has blue lights, iFly has orange lights, you've got 15 or 10 seconds to get out of the tunnel. What do you do? Do you fly straight out and maybe leave a few seconds wasted? Or do you uh, pop up and do a slow fall 180 to simulate track off? Do you... <coughs> Um, start booty flying and do a, practice your 360 degree turns. Do you roll onto your back and fly out on your back? It doesn't really matter what you do. Just have a little think about it and see what you can be adding to uh, your skill set. There's no right answer. Uh, just push yourself. Of course, stay within your allocated time. Don't be stealing somebody else's precious seconds, okay? In the sky... <coughs> In the sky... On a zoo dive, do you practice stopping hard um, right by the formation? Just off to one side, obviously. Don't aim directly for the formation, just in case you don't stop. Um, do you practice getting there first and taking super soft grips with just your thumb and your forefinger? Do you practice not overreacting to the mini funnel just in front of you? Do you practice your tracking? You know, Are you always pushing yourself to be the best at everything? Can you, can you practice helping making the formation fall faster while someone's taking heavy grips on you? You know? Try and put yourself under pressure so that when you're at an event, <coughs> try and put yourself under pressure so that when you're at an event and the pressure is external, you'll be more confident. Um, think about, I have to get to this formation in 10 seconds. Watch the video back, time yourself, okay? I talked about attitude and it shows here as well. Be a hero, don't be a victim. Someone docked on you heavy, suck it up, cupcake. This this is a big way. Protect the base. Protect the formation. Don't let that, don't let that heavy dock start a wave. Okay? Be a team player. Um, sometimes seeing what is possible has an inspiring effect on people. Um, I used to think I was good at tracking. I mean, I just had some coaching, right? Um, and then I went on my first 100 way, and people were just disappearing off into the distance, and it made me realize how much I still needed to learn. So I found out the information. I got a little bit better. A couple of years later, I went on a 200 way. Oh, same thing again. People just disappearing off into the distance. Um, you are never as good as you hope you are. Okay, always push yourself. Um, and will you do what it takes to be on the biggest jumps? How much do you want it? How deep is your commitment? It's all part of the attitude. So to be a good skydiver, you need to be fit, coordinated, knowledgeable, with the right attitude. And then we add in being a team player and experience, and you're a good big way skydiver. Those are six ingredients you need. Where do you get the experience? From different events. So the first set of events is a bit ad hoc, very little planning, it's your mates. You're doing a four way, a couple of people rock up, it's a six way, a couple of people rock up, it's an eight way, 10 way, oh my gosh, you're doing a big way. Um, very little planning, no one really knows what's going on so much. Um, walk up load organizing, someone puts out a tannoy who wants to come and play, someone has organized it in adv advance maybe, but you don't really know who's gonna be there until the day, or sometimes on the jump, sometimes it's changing quite a lot, um, it's ad hoc. Next set of 
events up. So you've got load organizing with the registration form. You know what's going what's to happen. There's often no theme, though. It's just big way. Skills camps, um, turn up, learn, pretend it's a hundred way, make mistakes. You know, um, completions shouldn't be a priority. At least they shouldn't be. Um, no blame on stuff. At least they shouldn't be any blame. Try new stuff out. Just don't put anyone at risk, um, and you'll be fine. Um, the next group has more planning involved. Events. I couldn't really think of a proper noun for something like this. Um, but we're sort of getting to the stage where there's some kind of selection process. Okay, maybe it is widely advertised and you have to apply for a slot and provide references, or it could also be a direct email to people who have proven themselves previously. National records, world records, you definitely have to apply and there's no guarantee of getting on. Multiple load organizers, about one for every 20 participants, and you'll need references. Um, there's likely to be a bench group jumping as well. Uh, this is a group of substitutes. Uh, if you have a bad day or you're unwell, um, you might be asked to move to go jump with a bench um, and someone else will take your slot. You might get switched back when you're well again, or you might have to wait for someone else to have a bad day to get your opportunity. Keep doing your best on the bench group. If Hopefully you'll get a second chance. If not, at least leave a good impression for the next event. Okay. No, um, lots of the events have more than one organizer and they often recruit for their own sector and they're in charge of their own sector. If you don't get into an event with one uh, for one sector, for one load organizer, you can try reaching out to another load organizer. <coughs> for both national and world records, expect to be doing the same jump over and over and over again. It can be a little demoralizing when your sector is building every single jump for several days in a row, but you, there's little problems around the rest of the formation. Um, keep your focus high, show us that positive attitude. Uh, there is another kind of event that you never see advertised, invitational events, those secret kind of jumps you never really hear about. Just apply anyway, let people know that you're interested, um, tell them you're keen, send them your skydiving CV, um, but keep it brief, one page of A4 please, nothing more than that. Um, and don't send long videos and expect a load organizer to watch, ain't nobody got time for that. If you have to send a video, keep it snappy please. Um, People think all oh, this is a secret, uh, but the right people know where to look. It is a journey to get to that point, though, so enjoy the jumps. Be proactive and enjoy the jumps along while you can, okay? Uh, shout out to Paul Rimton for this photo. This is me thinking like an organizer, okay? How to get inside my brain. Um, what am I thinking? What do I want? Who am I working for? Um, this is from the October 2020 Skydive the Mag, Paul Moden did a write-up from my Big Way Skills Camp in the summer of that year, and this is the criteria that I told everyone that I was judging them on. So um, aircraft, speed, awareness, control, consistency and resilience, tracking, canopy, on the ground, and overall. Um, I'm a big fan of standing on the shoulders of giants to see further. This was, I saw the basis for this out of Skydive Chicago. I think it was based on their head down world records events. I tweaked it a little bit for what I wanted, um, but thank you to them for that. And it's it's pretty much what I judge people on. Judge people, that sounds so harsh. Um, it's pretty much what I'm assessing you guys on, consciously, self-consciously, from the moment you walk onto the drop zone at one of my events. Um, so we talked about Brit 200. The first event is planning to be an 80 way in autumn of this year. Um, it's a big responsibility to trust you on a big way for two reasons, okay? The first one is money. Um, I'm looking at Paris. They have twin otters and sky vans, so 80 way is going to be four planes. I know that four planes going to 18,500 feet is $48 a slot. Um, I checked it with Dan BC yesterday, actually. 80 way plus camera is going to be over $4,000 in jump tickets alone per jump. Um, it's a $4,000 decision. Do I trust this person with $4,000 or don't I? Everyone else is trusting me to make the right decisions. Do I trust you? Do you have some evidence in your skydiving CV um, that proves I can trust you? Do you have something I can lean on if you make a mistake? I'm going to get it in the neck from the other team captains for selecting you. I want to know that I can defend myself. Okay. Um, now, everyone has bad days. I have absolutely see, been on a skydive where there was a guy with 20,000 jumps, slightly lower than he should have been, and there was another guy with over 10,000 jumps down there as well. And it was, you know, everyone can have a bad day. Um, 
no load organizer wants to cut anyone. We want to make you, um, we want you to perform. Um, our skill is getting everyone in the right slots from the start. Um, that's what a load organizer is proud of. We don't want to be chopping and changing from plan A. If you got 70% in an exam, that's a pretty good score. Um, but that's still 30% wrong. Imagine a big way skydive with 30% the wrong people. Or all the right people, but in 30% of the wrong places. It's just not going to go well. In my head, slotting needs to be about 90, 95%. Okay? Um, but if you can have enough experience and the equipment to cope in more than one slot, oh, load organizers love that. Okay? The best skydivers are the first name on the list, but they are the last name to be slotted. And secondly, it's not just the financial side of things, it's the actual risk too. Um, the risk in skydiving is small, but the consequence is very large, and that gets quite confused a lot. You'll see a lot of muggles not really understand that. And on big way, the risk is much higher. Um, it's some of the riskiest skydiving you can do. Bluntly, I've lost friends on big way skydives. A couple of canopy collisions spring to mind. I was on a jump where um, 100 skydivers left the airplane um, to build a formation, but only 99 walked back in. Um, that was a low turn. Maybe they were the spot was a bit off. Maybe they tracked a bit further. Maybe they just tried to get back to save themselves a walk because they knew that dirt dive was there. Um, uh, the debrief was going to be up in a little bit. Um, don't know. They turned low. Uh, his family, so we stopped jumping that day. His family came out to see us the next day at the dirt dive. They um, they wished us well. I don't really remember what they said, but I remember how I felt, how we all felt. Uh, it's sobering, and I'm not going to stop jumping. I love jumping, but I make plans on every jump so that that sort of thing doesn't happen. Um, you should too. And if we make decisions that are sometimes a bit harsh, this is what's going on in the back of our heads. Okay. So for a big way, I want a good skydiver with experience, who's a team player, who I have confidence in, or someone I trust has confidence in. Okay. <clears throat> How to get onto big ways. Load organizing is exhausting. Oh, so thank you to Martin Skirbel for the photo. This was over Castion, actually. It was a fun job. Um, load organizing is exhausting. Um, I talked about this with Pete Adam last year. He agrees. At the end of each day, he just steps away and goes and recharges in his hotel room or wherever he's staying. People who can make, we want to jump with people who can make our lives easy. Um, who can make our decisions easy? People who put a smile on our face. Is it? People say a lot of um, skydiving big way is favoritism or cliquey. Is it cliquey if I invite my friends, the people I like jumping with, to onto the jumps I want to do? I guess if you're in the jumps, it's not, and if you're not in those jumps, then it is a bit cliquey. Um, and I'm not asking for sycophants. I don't want yes people. Um, you should always be challenging ideas um, when you might have a better solution, or definitely if there's a safety concern. Okay, at least on my events anyway. Some load organizers hate that. But me, I don't need to be right. I just want to get it right. So if you've got a good idea, I want to hear it. When we get to do a British 200 way, um, there, will it be the 200 best individual skydivers in the UK? No. Um, will there be the best 200 individual UK skydivers on that drop zone? Maybe. Um, it depends how you judge things. Will they be the 200 best team players in the UK? No. Again, probably not, although I'd like to hope so. Um, it'll be a mix. Different roles within each big way. We need people for the base, we need people for the middle, we need people for the outside, and we're looking to fill them all. Okay, a quick game for you all. Think about this in your heads. Um, imagine you're a load organizer. Imagine you're organizing an 80 way. There's one slot left. We're going to compare two imaginary skydivers who would you take? Um, also, a quick shout out to my friends who've done this before. So, skydiving, two skydivers. One has an acceptable 4.8, um, and they're okay skilled wise, and the other one is super light, but super competent. Which skydiver would you take? Um, what about two skydivers where the 4.8 is perfectly acceptable and they've got okay skills, and the other skydiver is pretty heavy actually, fast faller, but they are super competent? Who would you take? What about two skydivers with equal skill and experience, but one is mouthy and blames others, and the other takes responsibility? What about two equal skydivers, but one is always on their phone at the dirt dive? What about, who would you take? Two equal skydivers, but one helps you out unexpectedly the day before. 
Um, what about two equal skydivers, but one tells you how much they want it to be on the formation, on, the, on that record. And where I'm going with this is, um, we're only human, we're only human. Load organizers are only human, we make mistakes too. Um, hopefully with a little understanding, you can see how or why we might have made those mistakes if we make them, but also, as a load organizer, we get to see you grow as skydivers. And for me, wow, that's cool, okay? Um, that's a major motivation for me. If you're willing to invest in your skills, then helping you to be the best skydiver you can be is a privilege. Um, back in March 2020, we started the Brit 200 plan. Um, to start with, we had quite a few applications, and this is a couple of them. And one of the questions was, why are you applying? Why should we invite you? Um, so this person wrote, I watched Eddie the Eagle and cried with happiness at the end. Then a few moments later, Brian Cummings sent me a picture of a 219 way sequential hashtag life goals. I want there to be a livelier big way scene for Great Britain. And I also want to be part of the next generation of big way skydivers. It's the best kind of teamwork I've experienced in my life so far. And in 2020, I'm taking lots of steps to ensure that I'll be as ready as I can for this event. I've signed on to various tunnel sessions, three big way events so far, and a flight 101 and 102 canopy piloting course. I'm also going to enter the FS UK Nationals this year with a four-way team. Oh, I love the passion. And then this one, why are you applying? Why should we invite you? Me, 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 please choose me. Who wouldn't jump at the chance to be part of this fantastic opportunity? Wow, just wow. If chosen, I will work my socks off to impress with attitude, work, ethic, and skills. I love the passion. Um, so summary. Getting on a big way is a bit like a job interview. Um, usually it's skill and experience that decisions are made on, but attitude and desire can tip the balance in your favor. So you can do everything we've talked about and still not perform. And it's a really obvious mistake and it is exasperating to a load organizer and no one really talks about it. This is like, if I could only give you like two minutes of my presentation, it would be this bit. Um, just because you got there doesn't mean you get to stay there. You can't just do a couple of events a year uh, or a couple of weekends a year and expect to stay a world-class skydiver or to keep improving, okay? Um, it doesn't work like that with any sport or skill. You have to stay current. You have to keep practicing. And in skydiving, that means you have to keep doing jumps that you might think are beneath you, okay? Um, I mentioned earlier you need experience. And now you have it. And getting experience got you current. And currency is king. Um, and it got you that invitational big way, got you an invite onto that invitational big way event. And it was amazing. You've made it. Um, but too many people think that once they've made it, they don't want to waste their money on simple jumps, on jumps with people with lesser experience or lesser skill, um, jumps beneath them. They're going to waste their money. Wrong. Skill fade is real, and it will bite you. Um, you can learn something on every jump. So set yourself a goal. We're back at that thing again, conscious practice. Um, lower experience groups are where you test yourself. Challenge yourself, of course. If you don't challenge yourself and you just fly average because that's what you do, then yeah, you're going to be average. Um, so look at yourself. Look at what skills you need to do, want to work on. What do you need to do to be current? Uh, what skills can you practice on this jump? You can do two-way two jumps with a buddy to practice a set of skills, and then the next jump you switch it round. Um, this got a quote here from um, a friend. I was arranging a six-way in the tunnel, and I spoke to this guy who was quite experienced and said, um, a couple of these guys have never done six-way in the tunnel before, and he came back and said, I'll fly with anyone. If they're safe to do, if, if you think they're safe, I'm happy to fly. It's always fun, even with low experienced people. Um, brilliant. And this was 18 months ago, January 2020. Uh, this guy is now giving a presentation at two o'clock, um, Smart and Skirbel. Um, and then a day later, he comes back and says, I might wear my free fly suit tomorrow just to challenge myself. Brilliant. You know, you don't have the booties. You take the booties away. You need a larger leg input to do the same move. You put the booties back on. You're going to fly even faster. Okay? Uh, brilliant. When you're in the sky, challenge yourself with specifics. Can I work on my fast fall here? Can I delay in the door and then dive down? Can I leave extra early as a super floater? Can I work on taking the lightest grips possible? Yes. 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 Um, is it advisable to practice or just be confident that you can rock up on an 80 way and be amazing? Of course we need to practice. Um, I see people who do an amazing 20 way or a 20 way event and I'm brilliant, here have a reference, go do some 40 ways. 
And then a year later, they're like, hey, they're trying to cash in that reference to go and do 40 ways, but they haven't done the prep that got them to that 20 way stage. If this was any other sport, you'd get laughed at. Imagine running. You do all the training, you go and do a half marathon. Great, you, you hit your target time, two hours, whatever it is. You have a really good time, right, I'm going to do a marathon next year. But you don't do the training that got you to the half marathon in the first place. What is that all about? Um, it drives me crazy, it's infuriating. You have to do the cold runs in January for training. You have to do the jumps. Um, thank you.